Today's or tonight's English Majlis is for the commemoration of the Shahadat of our first Imam, Amir al Mu'minin, Hazrat Ali alayhi salam. Allahumma sallam alayhi wa um, Our guest speaker for this evening is Sayyid Ali Abbas Razawi. Uh, inshallah, he'll be joining us shortly. Uh, before I invite uh, Sayyid to um, recite the Majlis for this evening, we also have with us uh, Masum, uh, Sayyid Masum. Abbas, who will be uh, reciting as well, and um, we also have with us uh, Dr. Ahmed Musa, who is part of um, Al Ain Society. Um, let me just bring. Say, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor, for joining us this evening. Um, I, I know you, you, um, you uh, Alain, we, we know all about the Social uh, Care Foundation. Um, I know you'd like to do a so, short presentation for us, yes. inshallah, and um, show us what work you've been doing in Ramadan as well as throughout the year. Yes. So, Jazakallah for taking the time out to do that for us today. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be back in the Smilla Rahman Rahim, Mosalla, Alam Hamad, Wajah Taibin of Bahreen, Law, Mosadi Alam Hamad, Wali Muhammad. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to update you on the work of the Hind Social Care Foundation. Um, many of you are already supporters of the Hind, already contributing to the work of the Hind. Um, but we thought we'd just spend a couple of minutes to give you a quick update. Uh, on the work of Al-Ain and what um, has been happening over the past year. Um, before that, we'd like to you know, start by sending our condolences to Imam Bahru al-Asr al-Zaman on the um, night of the Shahada of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi salam, was known for many traits, many characteristics. He was known for his valor, he was known for his bravery, for his patience, for his wisdom, uh, but he was also known as the father of the orphan. Um, and as we have seen from the way the world has responded to the pandemic, whether it's governments, whether it's people, whether it's organizations, we have seen how much inequality exists in the world we live in, how much hardship befalls those who are um, less fortunate than us. Tonight, um, as one of the Liyali of Fadr, and in commemorating the Shahada of Amir al-Mu'mineen, we have the opportunity to um, follow in his footsteps uh, and care for the orphans. Tonight, um, the orphans uh, of Kufa, who used to rely on the support of Amir al-Mu'mineen, were missing Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. But the reality is that over a thousand years later, the orphans living in Kufa today are also calling out for help and support and you have an opportunity through your support with that you are providing to make sure that um, you um, support those who are in need as you know Al-Ain was set up under instruction of the Sayyid Sistani over 15 years ago now and supports over 64,000 orphan children all across Iraq and these this um, sponsorship this care this support is comprehensive it's financial support it's medical support it's psychological rehabilitation, it's housing, it's mental health support. Basically, the 64,000 children who are being supported are treated just like we would treat our own children. And this is why you believe in the cause, and this is why you uh, are such um, loyal supporters to the work of Al Ain. Um, Al Ain runs on 0% admin. All the running costs of Al Ain are covered by the Office of State Sistani. Al Ain has permission to receive religious dues such as homes, zakat, adhiyah, and in its entirety to be spent on those in need. 
Many of you uh, are currently already sponsoring orphan children. Uh, have taken it upon yourself to become a private sponsor of an orphan child. Jazakallah for that. Um, many of you have sadaqa boxes in your homes which are um, from Al Ain. And as you know, these boxes have a unique quality that money placed into them count as received sadaqa. So you receive the full reward of sadaqa as soon as the money is placed into these boxes. If you don't have a box, you can request one delivered to you for free from our website. If you've got a box that you'd like exchanged, again, you can request for this to be exchanged. Um, if you're not sponsoring an orphan child, please consider to sponsor one in the name of Amir al-Mu'mineen tonight where your reward is multiplied. And I'd like to remind you um, of um, an ayah from the Holy Quran, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ in that you shall not achieve righteousness until you give from that which you hold dear to yourself. So, brothers and sisters, um, I encourage you um, to consider doing something in the name of Amir al muminin tonight um, in support of those who are less fortunate and do so in a way where uh, you are ensuring that you are empowering these children, you are giving them a second chance. Um, our campaign for the holy month of Ramadan is a campaign of Sadaqa Jariya. It's to build mental health um, uh, centers and uh, centers that provide mental health support as well as vocational training. So your contribution to the Sadaqa Jariya would ensure that children would have access to a comprehensive care package um, uh, uh, to allow them to overcome a difficult start they have faced in their lives. You can see the website um, underneath on your screen to visit if you like um, and I would end like to end how I started we are commemorating the Shahada of Amir al muminin who was known amongst many um, things as the father of the orphans tonight we are here mourning his Shahada but we can make a stand we can make a change we can contribute uh, we can follow in his footsteps through sponsoring and caring for the orphan children of Al Muhammad. صلى الله على محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين. جزاك الله دكتور. Really appreciate your time and uh, thank you very much for sharing um, all this information. I'm sure that inshallah many people are making most of these special nights um, in, in these last ten days of Ramadan and will be donating to causes just such as yourself. Uh, so thank you very much again. Um, I'd like to now welcome um, Sayyid Masoom Abbas. Um, um, uh, so Masoom, if you can get yourself off mute and then please start your recitation. Jazakallah. Muhammad wa ala Muhammad salawat <coughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajahum <coughs> Nikla hai janaza koi Allah ke ghar se Nikla Janaza koi Allah ke ghar se Afilaak mein ik shor hai Matam ke asar se Afsos ke masjid mein Namazi gaya mara Afsos ke masjid mein Namazi gaya mara Chikam nahi hashir kayamat ke asar se Nikla hai janaza koi 
الله اكبر سي زنام سي يكهد اكبر دل كل كبر زنام سي يكهد اكبر دل كل كبر شعبير کی ہم شیر ہے رونے کو نہ ترسے مکلا عباس ذرا زنب مزتر سے خبردار عباس ذرا زینب مزتر سے خبردار فریاد میں ہٹ جائے نہ چادر کہیں سر سے مکلار جنازہ اور کوئی ہے نکلا محمد وال محمد سلوات جزاک اللہ معصوم تھینک یو ویری مچ فار دیٹ ریئلی اپریشیٹ یو ٹیکنگ یور ٹائم اپالوجیز فار دا ساؤنڈ کوالٹی ان شاء اللہ ویل سوٹ سم ونگ آؤٹ نیکسٹ ٹائم میک اے بٹ مور بیٹر ان شاء اللہ As usual, I have a couple of announcements before um, say the request say to commence this lecture. Um, this sponsored program is uh, both live on YouTube and Facebook, so please check these out to see other programs that Adara have run during Ramadan. Um, I would recommend that you subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel or the Facebook as well, if you haven't done so already. Um, we can also... Um, Uh, get in touch with us um, via email account, which is at the bottom there, which is hyc.hussainia.org.uk. So recommend any feedback or suggestions that you might have. Uh, our next scheduled program for Ramadan is on the 8th of May at 9.45 p- p.m. Uh, so please join us for that as well. Um, I'd like you, you all to thank you all for taking the time out to attend the majlis and understand after a long day of fasting, but, uh, you know, it's take some commitment to come along. Um, but yeah, thank you again so much for coming. And um, yeah, please, if you've got any suggestions, more than welcome to send them through to us as well. Um, I would like to now welcome Sayyid with a loud salawat.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا بن قاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى الفرج وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الذين ذهب الله عنهم رجسا وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد عجل فرجهم أما بعد قال الله الحكيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا نزلناه في ليلة القدر وما دراك مع ليلة القدر صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Tonight is the night of commemoration of the Shahada of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Tonight is ultimately a night of orphans. It's a night of those people who are lonely. It's a night of those people who have no one. It's a night of those people who are the lovers of Wilaya. Tonight is a strange night, for as one Quran is revealed and descends, another Quran ascends back towards the Creator. The entire circle of life is complete the circle of guidance is complete and the true meaning of inna lillahi wa inna ilayha rajiun comes forth on a night like this tonight is one of the nights of qadr that we find within our traditions mansub to the imam narrated by our scholars that on the 19th night destiny is written on the 21st night it becomes heavier in terms of it becoming complete and on the 23rd night the stamp is sealed and destiny comes forth therefore these nights are also important the importance of these nights are that through supplication, through du'a, through tears, and through love of Ahlul Bayt, specifically on these nights, the love of Amir al-Mu'mineen, it's sufficient enough for a person to change those things which are going to be negative in their life. Tonight, death is ordained. You find that the risk is ordained on these nights. Happiness sadness, problems, trials, tribulations. But for those people who are ahl wilaya this night is a playground for you. Specifically, not just to change your destiny, but to change yourself. That would take an entire year, you find that within these nights are accelerated. The reason being is very simple. There's a barakah, on this night, there's a special risk on this night, which is not delivered on any other night, it doesn't come down on any other night. Therefore, if a person misses this risk, they don't receive it until the day of judgment. The reason being is that next, next year's risk is going to be something different. The two angles when you look at risk one is Mahdi and one is Manu. The spiritual dimensions are found tonight as well as the material dimensions. When you go for some of the du'a of tonight, you're asking Allah for his material wealth as well, and also spiritual wealth as well. These are these night. There's a barakah in this night, there's a blessing. And in the words of Allah, blessing is something that doesn't appear to be anything big, but within it is contained something profound. Three things you find within Barakah. Barakah has khayr in it, goodness. 
Baraka is also something which is continuous. And you find Baraka is something that within its continuity is, as they would say, purified there. There's a lot of benefit to it. Similarly, you find that this Quran that could be in front of you, outwardly looks like a book, but the benefits are continuous until the Day of Judgment. And this khair in this Quran that is above and beyond just putting it on your head. And that benefit is full. There's a lot of benefit that if a person knew the haqiq of the Quran, there are verses in the Quran, for example, in Surah Yasin, that if a person was to recite it, that particular verse at a particular time with a particular sharait, you find that in tradition, it says that a person born blind can be cured. The verses of this Quran, if you go to certain verses, the first six verses, for example, of a particular surah, and you were to recite it in a particular sharait, you would be able to gain the ability of tayy al-ard. There are specific verses in this Quran that if were to be recited, as I've opened it up, here it is, Surah Waqa'ah. The power of this is, is that you would never be hungry, you'd never go hungry. You find that there would always, always be a risk which would be coming down upon you. There are verses in this Quran, again, if I was to open it up, that if you were to recite this chapter on the very page that I've opened up, on the left-hand side of the page, without saying it, but if you were to recite this a thousand times every single day in this month, from the night of Qadr, you would be able to see all of your destiny until the Day of Judgment. Everything of yours would be there in the way that when Sayyid Ali Qadhi Marhum said to Ayatollah Khoui, look, if you can't do the spiritual exercises that I've given you, and he said, look, I can't do it. I can't go into Sajda and recite 400 times Ayatollah Khoui. It's difficult for me. And Sayyid Qadhi says, yes. For you is destined to be a marja, ijtihad. He says, but I want you to recite this particular verse 1,000 times every single day. And you'll see on the night of Qadr, Atullah Khui says, I saw myself reflected as if I was getting old. And to the moment where from the roof of the Haram of Amir al muminin somebody called out, Ayatullah al-Udma said, Abul Qasr al Khui has left this world. This is this Quran. Why? Baraka, profound Baraka. Specifically on this night, therefore, there's a barakah. And that barakah supersedes one of the conditions is that you should be up on this night. That we find again in our traditions, Allah Majlis has narrated it, the Zahara alayhi salam. Her principle was that she put her children to sleep just in case, according to Allah Majlis, that they could be awake the whole night. Now look, how old were these children? Maximum, they would have been a six or seven years old. If we take the maximum, but they were up this night to gain the barakah, or not, at least not this night, but the night of the 23rd, that they would gain the full benefits of Qadr. To stay up on this night is in the full benefit. Idraq of this night, dark of this night is a board. That's the purpose. That if a person truly comprehends this night, then what have they done? 1,000 years more of worship, 1,000 months more of worship, meaning what, an entire lifetime. You have basically gained an entire lifetime of worship. And if you were not to commit a sin in this small period from Maghrib to Fajr time, it's as if you spent an entire lifetime of worshiping Allah without sinning. And if you were to do the same thing the year after, comprehending what this night is, again, the same thing. So look, this night is important. Why? Because this night symbolizes taqdeer. Qadr, miqdar, taqdeer. Miqdar, approximation of all of creation from the beginning of time to the end of time is determined on these nights. Laylatul Qadr's secret is housed within two individuals. Al-layl hiya ummi Fatima. The night of Qadr the night itself is Fatima alayhi salam. Hamlul wujud is Fatima. That thing which bears the burden of Qadr is Fatima. Therefore, the haqiqah of the night of Qadr is Fatima alayhi salam. 
in the words of Salman, the one who was on the 10th level of Iman, oh, Salman, he spoke very little because a person who has secrets speaks very little. The way to gain secrets is not to speak. Within silence, secrets comes. And this is why it's important to remember the vast majority of sins that are committed by us as human beings are because of the tongue. If the tongue silences, you find secrets begin to flow. Salman was asked, how did you get to the 10th level of Iman that nobody has got to? Salman replied, Khalwa with Rasulullah. He says, in this Khalwa, what did Rasulullah teach you? He says, when I was alone with the Prophet, he taught me one thing that took me all the way from the ground zero to the arsh for the 10th level of Iman. And that was one thing. What was it? The haqiqah of Fatima alayhi salam. On these nights, if somebody even appreciates and understands a portion of what Zahra symbolizes, you'll see that they get to that level which is required, at least at the dark of this night. Take it a step forward. What else is? She's, that, she's the person who can uphold the burden of this night. Look, remember one thing. What does the Quran say to paraphrase? Quran, if it was to be revealed to a mountain, the mountain would crumble, right? There's nothing that can hold the Quran but the heart of the Prophet. What is Zahra? Bada'atun minni. She is effectively the heart of the Prophet. Where the Quran is revealed. She's the Hamila. Hamila. A woman who's pregnant is called Hamila. Why? Because she is able to uphold a burden. The burden of life. In the same way the Quran is life. Quran is Samit is life. And the only thing that can uphold it is Zahra. Because she is Laylatul Qadr. That Layl that Qadr is revealed upon. And what is Qadr in its highest form? Qadr is Amir al muminin but in fact it's the Imams. If one Quran is Samit is revealed on this night, and that night becomes Laylatul Qadr, then Zahra is that person who gave birth to 11 Quran al Nadiqs. This is what symbolizes this night. But look, it's not enough for you just to understand an aspect of this night, but how to utilize this night is important. That, for example, if a person has bad akhlaq, then know that this night is wasted for them. If they don't have an ability to be able to talk to people, especially their children, especially their families, they will never reach the height of what they need to reach to. In the words of Atullah Pahlavani, the famous mystic of Tehran, um, said that one day I was a bit angry, a bit harsh on my family, meaning his children. He said that in Alam and Ma'ana, I saw 20 years of my worship destroyed. Now imagine, this is why there's categories of Orafa. The highest category was well, the category of the student of Sayyid Ali Qadhi and Marhum. Why? Because you look at somebody like Pahlavani, who is upset or is angry with his family, wiped out 20 years in Alam and Ma'ana, he sees. But then you find the students of Qadhi, somebody, for example, like Sayyid Hashim Haddad, who when his mother-in-law and his wife is continuously teasing him and pressurizing him and is rude to him, when he goes to Qadhi, he says, Qadhi, what should I do? Qadhi says, Sabr. That was enough. You look and you see. When the spiritual master gives you a amr, you don't look left or right, you follow it. In the same way, when the sixth Imam, as it says in tradition, when he says to Bahalul, Meme, Bahalul becomes a Majnoon. And through this, then you find that he does tabligh. It's the difference between an ordinary mystic. Yes, there's different categories of awliya. And that's not belittling somebody like Pahlavani. Today, the official Hausa and Qum, most of the people who study Irfan are from his students, his students. But that doesn't mean that there's not a higher maqam, a higher level of somebody like Hashim Haddad, like Bahjad, somebody like Abdul Karim Kashmiri, 
somebody like Allama Taba Taba'i. And even from amongst all of them, there are three mystics who were Qadi's top students. Ali Muhammad al Jurti, Sayyid Ahmad al-Kashmiri, who's buried in Siri Nagar, and Sheikh Bahjid, who's buried in Qom, in the Haram of Ma'asama Qom. These are those three people who were the most elite of the students of Qadi. Hashim Haddad says, I remained quiet after Qadi said, don't say anything. He says, one day it came to a stage when my mother-in-law was harassing me. And at that stage, he says, that I developed the ability known as Mawti Ikhtiari, that I was able to get to a state of Tajarrud. And my soul, Ruh, became Mujarrud. And this is why probably Allama Tahrani himself, when he writes the book Ruh Mujarrud, he calls it Ruh Mujarrud because it was a book for Hashim Haddad. The reason being why? Because he becomes Mujarrud, he becomes immaterial. He's able to basically die, remove his soul from his body. And this was an ability that the top student of Qadi, Qadi Thani, as they called him, said, Ahmed Kashmiri. In Sirinagar, when the doctors examined him, they said, everything inside of you is gone. It's failed. I don't know how you're alive. He said, because of the ability of multi ikhtiari And then he died, obviously. But the fact of the matter is this. For us to understand that there are people who are normal people, who are not imams. They are like me and you, but they have abilities. Why do they have abilities? One of them is this. Because they're able to dark this night, ability to comprehend the night of Qadr. Remember, what is the secret of Qadr, or at least this night, secret is a little mu'mineen. You've heard this tradition, I'm going to paraphrase this tradition that our ulama narrate. It's mansub to the Prophet, whereby he says, Ali, again paraphrasing, I fear that if I was to reveal all of your fawail, then people would do what they did to Isa ibn Maryam. That means that all of the fawail of Amir al-Mu'minin are not there. And if all of the fawail of Amir al-Mu'minin were to be there, people would take him to the level of God. What is Amir al-Mu'minin? Today we know him as Insani Kamil. We know him as a Madhar al-Aja'ib. That makan al that the Sifat and Asma of Allah Tajalli, a Zuhur of Asma and Sifat of Allah. And if people have a problem with that, and you know people do, they want to even belittle that, then imagine if the Prophet truly was to come and give the Fadail of Ali what Ali would be. You know, there's a tradition again, again, which is mansub to ulama. And this goes back to Ibn Abbas. And it was, in fact, Ibn Abbas who asked this question, apparently, to the Prophet. And in this, you know, there's a weird dialogue that takes place. One day, Amir al-Mu'mineen was walking on the street and Rasulullah was walking as well. When Rasulullah saw Amir al-Mu'mineen, it's the first time, according to this tradition, which Allah Majlis has narrated it. The first time he says, look, Assalamu alaykum ya Amir al mumineen Ibn Abbas comes to the Prophet and he asks him, he says, look, you know, are you not Amir al mumineen Why have you called Ali Amir al mumineen for? So he replies to him. He says that when I went on the Ma'araj, Ali's maqam is what? He stated as such that when Allah, Qaba Qusayn, O Adna, Got to that maqam, what happened? When Jibreel apparently, when he asked Rasulullah, he says, what happened? He says, look, Allah spoke to me in the voice of Ali. And at that point, the question is asked, is this Ali or is this Allah? And the reply here comes, again, to paraphrase, he says, look, Muhammad, I looked into your heart and I saw no one more beloved. Why? Hayba of Allah is such. Allah was to speak in his, he could see that even the Prophet at that maqam says, to give you peace of heart, I spoke in the way of Ali, the lehn of Ali. This tells you maqam in and of itself in the heart of the Prophet of what Amir al muminin is to the Imam, is to the Prophet. But here the Prophet from 120 times that he won on Ma'araj, one of them was the physical Ma'araj, which was this one. And when he went there and he got to that maqam, what did he see? In ev on every door was written what? Tahleel 
and then after that, Shahadatain, so Muhammad Rasulullah, and then Ali and Amir al Mu'mineen. Everywhere, on every door that the Prophet apparently went to, he sees this. And there was nothing more told to the Prophet than the Wila of the Imam. This is what's important. Look, let me take it a step further. Again, Mansub to the sixth Imam, whereby somebody comes to him and he says, if I want to give salam to the Hujjah who's going to come, the awaited Messiah who's going to fill the world with justice, can I give him a salam by saying, Assalamu alaikum, ya Amir al Mu'mineen? Here the Imam replies, This is no. Know that this specific title of Amir al Mu'mineen is only for our Jad, though we all, all of them are Amir al Mu'mineen in that respect, that the Amirs of the Mu'min, Mu'mineen. But the fact of the matter is, is that this is titleless Mansub. And here this is what's strange. Anyone who takes this title, who may have taken it before or will take it after, will be nothing but kafir. This title of Amir al-Mu'minin is only and only for the Imam. Anyone who takes it, according to this tradition, adopts this title from that previously or until the end of time, will be kafir. Amir al-Mu'minin is Amir al-Mu'minin. There's nobody else. This title was given by Allah and the Prophet. He gave it in this physical world. This is why, remember one thing, there's nothing better than wilaya. There's nothing better than wilaya. Question can be asked. You know, you've emphasized wilaya so much, but what about Allah? Look, my friends, wilaya of Ahlul Bayt is the wilaya of Allah. It is through this wilaya of the Ahlul Bayt that we come to understand Allah. There is no zaman and makan for Allah. There is no location. You can't comprehend Him. You come to know Tawheed because of Ahlul Bayt. You come to understand God because of this wilayah, because of the Prophet. If there was no wilayah, if there was no Prophet, if there were no Imams, you would not understand or comprehend God. Therefore, as Shias, if I can loosely use this word, you are wilaya centric You are Imam-centric. You are Ali-centric. You're Shia. By the term Shia, Shia of who? Shia of Ali. The baatin of this centricity is God. The vahir is the Imam though. You cannot leave the Imam because the Imam is that step for you to get towards Allah. Let me take you to the time when Allah says, When I blow a part of my soul into who Adam you will prostrate. One person, Azazil, gets up. He says, Allah, I don't want to prostrate to Adam. I've been prostrating to you. Doesn't want to prostrate to Adam. Does this mean that the angels who were prostrating were worshipping? No, it was out of respect to insan Kamil. Insani Kamil became the Kaaba of the angels. In fact, no, he became the center of all of Alam Ekon. Alam Imkan became what? Tamarkus Kaaba of the entire creation became Adam. This such that was out of respect for Insani Kamil. This was for Adam who was Insani Kamil. Respect for him. What does Allah say? You know what Allah says. Allah wants you to worship the way that He wants, not the way you want. You can claim to go directly to God, but you found the Khawarij claim this as well. You found Daesh claim this as well. They read Quran, they prayed, they fasted. All of that was for nothing. Why? Because of one principle. Because they've not understood that the pathway that's required, the bridge that takes you to the wilayat of Allah, is Amir al Mu'minin. This is why, again, a tradition that's mansub to the Prophet when he was drawing different lines, he draws one line straight. He says, This is, you know, Sarat al Mustaqim is like this. Sarat al Mustaqim is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Therefore, Tashayyu is Imam centric, effectively. Yes, God centricity comes only and only as the end product. But look, what does centric mean? What does centricity mean? Effectively, it's something that has location to it. Allah doesn't have location to it. You've got to use the bridge 
it is ahl is din ali to go back to a traditional term that in the olden days was used the concept of din ali this din of yours is the din of ali or din is a wasila it's not the end result din is a wasila this wilayat is a wasila because the manifestation of the wilaya of allah is ahlul bayt you know to go back into the words of a famous Iranian Turk, Azari Turk, Mullah Mahrali Khoi, there's a place called Khu in Azerbaijan region. A lot of it is now overlapping with the Azerbaijan, the Russian side. Very famously, this Mullah Mahrali Khoi one day recites a couplet Ha Ali Yun Basharun Kaifa Bashar. Rabbuhu fihi tajalla wa bahar. He says at night time he saw a dream. He says in my dream I saw Rasulullah. Standing next to Rasulullah was a middle mu'mineen. Rasulullah says recite that couplet. He says, ha ali yun bashar kaifa bashar. He says that Rasulullah says, wa kaifa bashar. Ali bashar wa kaifa bashar. What is Ali? Ali is that. We, God's manifestation, the whole of Allah, tajalli of Allah, is in that insani kamil. When Ali walks, it is as if the tajalli of Allah is walking, the asman sifat of Allah is walking. And therefore, the arsh has a location. If you look at it, there is, there is a zaman to it. There's, in fact, there's a makan. Why arsh is comprehensive of al and akon. Therefore, there's a mak, you know, in the physical sense and the spiritual sense as well. Kursi is the domain of Allah. Arsh is the kibriyai of Allah that contains the ilm and qudra of Allah. Automatically, when you say contain something, therefore it's created. But if you look at Ali, Ali is that madhar al-ajaib that is continuous. This is why you've been told that when you're in trouble, what do you say? Nadi Ali, it's a sunni And Nadi Ali that's got to us, actually the rawayat on and of itself, which is more, uh, you, you find that it's, more comprehensive is within Sunni tradition. Remember also one thing, just because something within us has a, according to the Rajal of Ahui may be weak, doesn't necessarily mean that it's weak, right? Firstly, the Rajal, if you look at the methodology today, there's still discussion on the methodology. If ask the people experts on Rajal, the Rajalis, said Musa Zubairi Zanjani, if not the same as more affable in terms of Rajal, when it comes to, according to many of them, this discussion on Rajal continues today, but remember certain things are passed down chest from chest. If you're Amil of Nadir Ali, then you know. Amil of Nadir Ali, if you can use Nadir Ali, if you're Amil of that, this is why spirituality is a different field altogether. Many things are passed down chest to chest, which you won't find written. Or if you find written, the sun, it may not be such. But remember, this is not a fiqhi discussion. And we're not just Wahhabi or Sunni just to go on a sanadi discussion sometimes. It's, if you were to say Tawaf Imam, all of the Asnad are weak in that respect. How can you prove the Tawaf Imam? Sunni and Shia both. That which indicates to Muhammad ibn Abdullah and that which indicates to Muhammad ibn Hassan. The rewai on Isa ibn Maryam is stronger than he's the Messiah. If you were to go on that methodology, how do you? But there's other methodologies. Why? Imams are twelve. The twelfth is coming. The twelfth is the son of the the eleventh Imam. For example, there's different methodologies of proving something to get to something. I don't have time to go into this discussion, but the reason why I mention this is because it's not clear cut. People who have no expertise in Rajal today are talking about Rajal as such, as if it's only one methodology of proving stuff. If that was the case, then fifty percent of everything that we do would be null and void many a times, including Khabar al-Wahid as well. But look, if you're not in the Suli, then okay, let's put that to one side. Without going deeper into the discussion, remember one thing. This is why you recite Nadi Ali itself. The mafhum of Nadi Ali is correct. Itself, madhar, madhar al-ajayb, according to the Amelin. People say madhar and so forth. Fine, linguistically make no sense, but for the Amelin, whether it's Shia or Sunni. 
whether you're chishti and you go for 40 days in takhalwa to do a particular amal of Nadi Ali. Whether you're of the Arafa, somebody like Abdul Karim al Kashmiri Ayatullah, who has a particular formula of Nadi Ali. Whether you're the son of Ayatollah Na'ini, the great Murtaz, the great spiritual master who implement all your hafiziyan. Sahib Karamat, said Musa Zarabadi, whether you're from the spiritual school of Mashad, or you're from the spiritual school of Isfahan, or you're from the spiritual school of Najaf, whether you're Sayyid Murtada Kashmiri, whose son writes to Hafat al-Radawiyya. Lastly, when all of you were, if you remember, when one of our alims from London said to all of you to recite that particular du'a to protect yourself, that was taken from Tuhfat or Radawiyah. There's a different school of Amilin. There's a different methodology they have. But anyhow, without going deep inside of it, remember one thing. This is the night of Ali. This is the night of importance of the middle of Look, I don't want to elongate this discussion too much. The reason being is this that you've got tonight to pray. Anything that is void of Amir al-Mu'minin is in haraf. Anything which is in the pathway. Look, the one is intellectual discussion. There's no harm in having that. For example, if Ahmad al-Khabil says that hijab is mustahab, okay, this is an intellectual discussion. Fiqhi discussion is one thing. Somebody says najasat of fulan, Najasat of Fulan, so and so is not Najas, so and so is. These are fiqhi discussions. You can continue to have that until the day of judgment, until the 12th Imam doesn't come, that's fine. When it comes to discussions on Aqeedah, when it comes to discussions on Wilaya, that's what there's no compromise on. You could be following the most liberal Mujtahid, but at the same time, if your Aqeedah is not correct, it doesn't make a difference to me whether a person follows one way or another way, whether they have a radical fiqhi opinion or another, the most important thing comes back to aqidah. And the most important thing on aqidah, as she of Ahlul Bayt is wilaya. Anything that's devoid of Amir al muminin is in haraf. Remember that. Let me give you a tradition. Ali wakes the hearts up. In the words of the famous Arif of Mashad Ja'far Mushtahidi, who would cure people with one Ya Ali. You've got to see this yourself. This is the problem is people, we give the stories, right? For you, some of you is difficult. If you were there and you saw it with your own eyes, the things that some of us have seen with our own eyes. Ja'far Mushtahid, he said, every maqam I reached, what is maqam? For something to turn from hal to maqam in and of itself, there's a discussion Irfan about hal and maqam. To get to a maqam in and of itself, what maqam is this? Maqam, these are pillars towards Allah, Ja'far Mushtahidi said. That Ja'far Mushtahidi, every marja had respect for Ja'far Mushtahidi. In the words, when somebody comes up to Ayatollah Marashi Najafi, Marashi Najafi replies, he says, look, all of the other so-called Urafa on one side, but I know Ja'far is above all of them. I can give Sanat that he's high. That Ja'far Mushtahidi, Sheikh Ja'far, he says, every maqam I reached was through the tawassal of the Ahlul Bayt. Similarly, now that we're on this, I'm going to give you one particular story. He said, Ahmed al-Khan Sari. A person in Tehran comes to say, Ahmed al-Khan Sari. He says, look, I have a brother. That brother does everything which is corrupt. He steals, he gambles, lies cheats, whatever it may be. We thought that he may become better by getting him married off. Still nothing. He says, we've tried to speak to our brother, but he doesn't change. He says, can you give him a nasiyah that he'll change? He said, Ahmad al Khansari says, listen, you know, though he was sahib in Afasis, but he says, look, you know, this isn't a problem that I can resolve. He thought about it then. He says, but there is one thing. He says, what is that? He says, if you can somehow take him to Imam Hussein, take him to Karbala. And remember, even though tonight is the Shahada of the Imam, what is mustahab on this night is to recite the Ziyar of Sayyid al Shahada. So that somehow, if you can take him to the Ziyar of Sayyid al Shahada, over there, if you see that tears come in his eyes, 
then bring him back, then I'll give him an asiyah. Ma'lume ke there's some nur in him still left. Hussein is the milak. This is why I always say when mothers and fathers come, they say, look, our children don't pray, they don't fast, they're going into this, they're going to that. Give a lecture on this, give a, there'll be 300 days of lectures and still you wouldn't see any output. One solution. Think sometimes, what is the hikmah of Allah that so many of our youth are going for Arbain? And if you've not been, Allah put it in your nasib to go. Why are so many of our youth going? Why are they going for Arbain? One reason that I can think of. There are multiple other reasons. One reason is this. It almost seems like that when Allah wants to redirect or your 12th Imam wants to redirect his own Ummah back onto the pathway, Hussein ibn Ali is used. So the Ahmad al-Khansaris is taken. Hussein is the only thing that can wake him. Brother comes back, he says, let's go to Karbala. He goes, what are you talking about? Karbala, come on, man. Somehow, some way, some, some shape or form, brother convinces his brother to go to Karbala. After a month later or so, he comes back to Ahmad al-Khansari. He says, Sayyidna, he went to Karbala. Somehow I convinced him. And when he went there, he was just shopping, looking around. He wasn't paying much attention. Then I took him towards the haram. As he walked towards the haram, he could see his demeanor such that he began, his neck began to go down. We went into the Sahin. It's the Sahin. He says, when I took him into that room, which is the Zari room, he says, my brother started to wail and cry. Said Ahmed says, bring him to me, let me give him an Asiya. He says, there's no need for an Asiya. When I saw him wailing and crying, I put my hand on his shoulders. I said, now brother, become insan. Become Adam. Become a human being. Make a pledge to Hussein. He says at that moment he made a pledge. And it was then that his life changed. Look, this night is important. If there's one thing you can do tonight, look, there's going to be many prayers that you're going to pray. Turaqa prayers that you're going to pray. Tonight you're going to do many things. If there's one thing tonight that you can do, try and build a connection with the Imam of your time. Try and cry for Amir al-Mu'mineen. Talk to him. This night has been ordained by Allah for you. Talk to your creator. Above and beyond everything is that conversation that you have with your creator. Learn to talk to your creator. Look, let me say just one more thing. I'm just looking at the time. Time is running out. So I'll say one more thing. Amir al-Mu'mineen's life can be really distributed into maybe five parts. His 10 years pre-Islam, his time with the Prophet, his 25 years of silence, his five years of Khilafah, and then his two days of Zarba, in and of itself as an entire university. This is narrated in our traditions. When Ibn Muljim was brought to the Imam, Imam could see that he was shaking. What does the Imam, as this Mansur, what does the Imam say? He says that you've done a great injustice, great tyranny. You've done a great tyranny. Ibn Muljim, was that your bad Imam? Say Ibn Muljim begins to cry because he was shaking. His Mansur, Imam, says to Imam Hassan, he says, Son, we soften his. Attachment, soften his, that he has his uh, ropes that have been, his hands have been tied with. Just feed him what we're eating. If I live, then I know what to do with him. But if I die, one dharb, in the way that he hit me with one dharb, that, that is some that then Khujar comes. To paraphrase this, he says, Khujar, if somebody said to do tabarri on me, would you do it? Khujar says, even if I was to be cut up into a thousand pieces, I would not disassociate myself with you. 
And this is exactly what happens. When Ma'awiyah gives the hukum to kill Hujar ibn Adi, what does he do? He asks for his son to be killed first. People were shocked. They said, look, people want to give life to this son. Why? He says, I'm worried that if after I die, my son does tabarri on Ali, loses this particular state of being. But there's one more thing that I want to say. Asbaq was sitting outside of the house of the Imam. People were sitting there, Imam Hassan, as it says in the tradition, comes and he says, look, you know, my father is in a very difficult position. Why don't you guys go? Let him rest. People go. Asbaq stays there. Again, second time. They say Imam comes out. He says more people were gathered there. Finally, when everyone goes, Asbaq sitting there. Imam comes out. As it says in the tradition, he says, Asbaq, why don't you go for? He says, where am I going to go and leave the door of Ali? Where am I going to go? That is a lesson. What happens? Imam Hassan says, come in. Come inside. Keep on knocking on the door of Walaya tonight and you'll find that your Mola will let you in. In that, Imam says something strange. I'm going to summarize. He says, a la'an of Allah on those people who cause their parents pain. La'an of Allah on those people who cause pain, suffering to their servants. Khadim. La'an of Allah on those people who cause pain to their imam, their leaders. And then he says, Asma, I'm all three. I'm a fa- he's a father to this community. He's a khadim of this community as well, but also he's the imam, the rahbar of this community. That's all I wanted to say. I wish we were together to cry together for the imam. You know, when the last half a decade, when I'm sitting next to the grave of Amir al-Mu'mineen on this night, there's a loneliness that's there. And you wish that if the whole world left the Imam, then you would never leave the Imam. There's a wish that may I never leave the Imam. Why? Because you can feel his loneliness. You know, they say that when Sayyidah Zainab came to the Imam, she says, Father, I have a question. It's going to be tonight at the time of Fajr, we're in Najaf. You will see people giving wida to Zainab as well. They'll be saying, Ya Zainab. They'll be remembering, they'll be giving wida, Al wida, Ya Amir. You'll see people be crying like that. Why? Because your imam is going. It was a night like this where you find that orphans were there when they heard that Ali needs milk, that maybe his pain may be diminished. All of these orphans were there. And the tradition says that when Imam Hassan goes, he says, you know, why are you here for? All of them had bowls in their hand with milk in their hands. What were they saying? They were saying that we're willing to sacrifice our milk, but don't take our father away from us. What does the Imam say to paraphrase? The Imam says something. He says, Ali has never taken the hop of an orphan. But we're willing to give it willingly. He says, no, Ali's never taken a hop of an orphan. Imagine what this night symbolizes. They say, Amir al muminin according to the tradition, says, he says, Zainab, ask me quickly, time is short. She says, Father, Umar Ayman quotes from the Prophet, there's a hadith says that a Hussein will be killed in Karbala. Father, tell me about this. It's Mansub, it says that the Imam says, says, Zainab, let me tell you something else. Zainab, you'll be taken as captive as well. Zainab, on that day, be patient. Tradition says that when they get to Kufa, get to the bazaar, get to where there was a bazaar there, this says Zainab begins to give a khutbah. To shut Zainab up, they say Umar ibn Sa'ad raises the head of Imam Hussein on a spear. At that moment, they say Zainab broke. 
her patience goes. She says, I heard about Hussein being killed. I heard about the horses being trampled over his body. I heard that we were going to become captives, but no one told me that Hussein's head was going to be raised. Says at that moment, when the head was raised, a sister begins to speak to a brother. She says, brother, if you don't speak to me, that's okay. But your Yatima here, her heart is breaking. At least speak to her. Amir al muminin is leaving this world. As the Imam is leaving this world, he whispers something into the ear of Zainab. I looked everywhere to find what that was. You find in a particular tradition that this old sis, this old daughter realizes, actualizes what was whispered by Amir al muminin This is why they say, have one son, have two sons, ten sons, but have one daughter. Why? Your daughter will remember your legacy after your death. Your sons will s separate your wealth. Your wives will marry again. It's your son. It's your daughters that will remember. They say a time comes. The most testing time for Zainab was bazar Sham. Zainab was broken. People were chucking stones at her. Hot water. A man comes forward as Mansoor. He says, An, why don't you go forward? Who was it? Your Imam said, Chan. Are you startled? Can you not go forward? Why? A reply comes, Sajjad, when my father was leaving this world, he told me that a moment like this was to come, which would be the most difficult moment. But my father said something to me. He says, Zainab, don't be worried. You're not going to be alone. Zainab, wait for me. I'll come. I'll take you by the hand. I'll take you into Bazar Shah's son. I'm waiting for my father to come. History doesn't say what happened after that, but an old woman stands up and says, Assalamu alaikum, ya Amir al muminin and begins to walk. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. For the sake of the broken heart of Sakina, may Allah put this wilaya into our nasal until the end of time, to the day of judgment. And may he give us the ability to utilize this night. Wassallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi tahiri. Thank you so much, Sayyid. Very much appreciate your taking your time and uh, presenting this lecture to us this evening. MashaAllah, may we all learn from it and uh, get barakat from it as well. Um, our next scheduled HYC program during uh, this Ramadan is on the 8th of May at 9.45 p.m. Our guest speaker for that for that lecture is uh, Sayyid Ali Halhali. Uh, so inshallah, please uh, join in and tune in to that program. It will be um, live again on Facebook and um, or YouTube as well. On the same day, inshallah, we'll, on the 8th of May, we are planning to distribute HYC Niyaz this year at the gates of Husseinia Mosque between the between 7 30 p.m. and 8 30 p.m. and that will be a uh, message will be sent out as well in due course for that as well. Um, Jazakallah all for you joining in today um, yes just please remember us all the all of us in your du'as especially for the marhumin who have passed away in the last year related to COVID and non-COVID issues etc. And let's let us make the most of these auspicious days of Ramadan. Um, yeah, we only have got a few more days left of this, you know, majestical month. Um, inshallah, we'll continue to build our relationship with the Quran and the Al Bayt. And um, yeah, thank you very much again. And inshallah, we'll see you again next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.